Hello everyone! Welcome back to another video. Today I am posting a video of a painting that I did a little over a month ago. Um, I guess it was probably actually closer to two months now. It was a practice piece I wanted to do using the new watercolors I purchased for Mermaid. And since I was getting ready for a month of mermaid paintings, I figured I'd paint a mermaid. <laughs> but not just any mermaid. <laughs> I also decided to do her in a red skin tone. Because at the time, there was a bit of drama going on in the art world involving an artist that I follow on Instagram and Twitter. And if you don't know the artist I'm talking about, it is Lord Grizz. And if you want to check her art out, um... If you've never heard of her, I'll leave a link to her Instagram below. She really does a lot of super cute art. I've participated in one of her Do This In Your Styles. And I also started the Quarantober Challenge that she hosted back in, I think it was like the early April. Um, but I only managed to complete a few of the prompts before I realized I should probably start focusing on Mermaid if I actually wanted to complete that challenge. So... Yeah, I almost forgot that I even participated in that challenge. That seems like so long ago. But back to the art drama that I was talking about. Now, I should really make a disclaimer that this is just my opinion. I'm not saying you should agree with me or that in any way I am right. But I have 15 minutes of audio to fill for this video and... I figure a little bit of art drama is always fun. <laughs> so now I'm not going to mention the artist that actually accused Lord Grizz of the art theft, only because I really think the only reason she did it was to bump up her algorithm. But you know, you know what? Never mind. Actually, I will say her name. It's Janet. <laughs> and she actually has quite a few platforms that she uses. But honestly, I never would have even heard of her had she not accused another artist of stealing her art. And I will show you the examples um, that she used. And you can judge for yourself if you think it's theft or not. Um, so, as you can see, I've put Janet's pieces on the left side of the screen. And I've put Lord Grizz's art on the right side. Now, I'll say there's definitely some similarities to the pieces. But, um, would I say that it was theft or copied? Absolutely not. Now, her whole claim was that they're both trying to make money through social media. And, of course, we all know the only reason that artists make art is to make money. <laughs> so, we definitely know what art means to Janet. <laughs> and there is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to make money from your art. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And oops, my camera got a little sideways there. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, every artist, of course, wants to make money from their art. But to say that someone stole art from you when it's pretty obvious that it's not really theft, the only thing I can guess is that, you know, apparently Janet thinks that maybe she's the only one that should get to make money off of girls with red skin, or girls with honey, or girls with candy, or girls with a three-quarter headshot, apparently. And I'm not sure how old Janet is. I'm really bad at guessing ages. And honestly, I mean, I, I'm usually wrong anyway. So, I mean, I know I'm 42 years old. And I'm pretty sure I'm older than both of them. But I can say when I was learning how to do tattoos, and that was about, uh, about 20 years ago, I can tell you that red-skinned girls with horns were pretty popular. They were actually everywhere. Very popular in the tattoo world. And I think most drawings of girls' heads are done with a three-quarter view. But let's just say that maybe Lord Grizz did take some inspiration from her pieces. And that's being very generous because it's definitely not a copy of what she did. I would have to say that Janet is pretty unjust in calling someone out for art theft when 
you know, it's obviously not copied. It's not exactly what she did. And there's so many other people that have done very similar things to those art as well. And she's not calling them out. So, yeah, as far as I can see, really what Janet was trying to do was boost her algorithm. And I would have to say that she definitely probably made that work because Lord Grizz did, you know, call her out on social media. And when Lord Grizz called her out on social media, the many Lord Grizz fans went to Janet's page and looked at her videos and commented on her videos and watched her YouTube videos and commented on her YouTube videos and I'm sure really blew up Janet's page. And, you know, it, of course, do you want to be known as the person that accused somebody of stealing art? No, I wouldn't think you would. But some people really don't care. <laughs> the people really don't care. So, you know, for her, in the long run, it'll probably work because most people, you know, I'd say about 10% of the people that view your stuff actually like maybe like it. Like they might see it and pass by it and that's it. About 10% of those people that are actually seeing it might stop to take the time to like it. And then about 10% of those people that actually took the time to like it might actually take a little more time and maybe comment on that picture. And then probably even fewer people will actually take the time to go back and look at what you've done in the past. So more than likely, now that her algorithm is flowing pretty nice and she's being um, suggested to new people that have never heard of her, and then they get on there and they see, you know, just some recent art, they don't see the drama that happened a month or so ago back, and they'll probably never will. They'll probably never go look back there. Because, I mean, really, in all honesty, there's so many artists everywhere in the world. And on, you mean, I find new artists all the time. And sometimes you may take the time to go back and look at their older stuff. But more than likely, when you start following somebody, you just start following them from there. And then you watch what they continue to put out. Most people don't Facebook stalk or Instagram stalk or any of those other things. And then, of course, <laughs> something else that just was kind of weird to me about the whole situation and why she would have such a problem with somebody using her style or using her art as a reference is the fact that if you look at her page, the majority of her art is fan art. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with fan art. I do fan art. I've done a couple of pieces in, you know definitely nothing wrong with fan art but how can you say that you know you're gonna have an issue with somebody using your art for reference or inspiration when the majority of your own art that you're doing is something that somebody else has already come up with <laughs> or characters that somebody else has come up with so really I I don't think that Janet even really thinks that Lord Grizz stole her art. I think she just happened to have some pieces that were similar and she saw an opportunity to, you know, boost her algorithm and she took it. Did she do, <laughs> do it in a way that I would think is very um, ethical or moral? No, not really. But, you know, I, one of them artists said, I want to say, I think it was Picasso, that said, lesser artists create and great artists steal. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, maybe Janet is, you know, being stolen from. I don't think she is. But I do think that she's stealing some, um, some moves that some of the other um, <laughs> popular YouTube channels have definitely used to grow their platform. It reminds me a lot of the whole drama that went on with Tati and James Charles. I remember when that all happened because that was kind of when I decided I was going to start making some YouTube videos and I was pretty frequent and active on YouTube and that video just happened to pop up as being a 
suggested video that I should watch, and that was Tati's Bi Sisters, or Bi Sister. And I remember watching it <laughs> and thinking, you know, this lady's really being kind of hypocritical. <laughs> and it really, you know, kind of shocked me that so many people kind of fell for what was going on with all that. I mean, I, I, should, I guess I shouldn't say it shocked me because, I mean, obviously people just get sucked into drama. And she was very convincing. I mean, she had a lot of crying going on and she was definitely trying to make it out like she was a victim in it. And, and she had a lot of people fooled. But <laughs> it did not go over well for her because James Charles had a lot of receipts and a lot of proof that she was lying. And like I said, she was being pretty hypocritical throughout the whole video. And unfortunately... She took it down. You can't watch it anymore. It's not. It's obviously not something she wants people to see because it kind of shows bad representation of her. I mean, yeah, it, I didn't follow her before. I don't follow her now. I know she did gain a lot of followers through that. She did bounce it up quite a bit. And, you know, there are people that had... And she lost some after, you know, the whole thing came out, too. But, you know, it, they kind of say sometimes, I think, that whole, you know, there's no such thing as bad press. <laughs> because, you know, even though she did start drama and really, you know, use somebody, a, a person to, you know, a person's feelings and a person. <laughs> I mean, it's like she really kind of called him out and made him look bad when he really didn't do anything wrong. And then after it was all said and done, then she deleted everything like nothing ever happened. I could say at least um, Janet hasn't deleted it. You can still go on her TikTok platform and see where she's accusing Lord Grizz of stealing her art. Which to me is just crazy that she hasn't taken that down yet. And crazy that she does not see that is obviously she has no, I mean, in my opinion. She has no clout. She has no, she has no right to say that she stole her art from her because she's doing stuff that everybody else did too. I mean, so many people have done the same things that she's talking about. So I don't get it. And that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> I definitely don't think it's right to use a person and make them look bad just to make yourself look better. I think it's an unfortunate thing that she did, um, just because it's obviously not what Lord Grizz was doing, and yeah, it's, it's definitely, in my eyes, <laughs> all she was doing was starting some drama to make herself more popular, and it worked. It really did. It worked for her. I mean, she gained a whole new fan base of people that just happened to see her and not look back and see how she ended up where she was <laughs> you know you miss the drama because I mean really I, I haven't seen anybody talk about it in quite a while which is a good thing because you know you don't really want to keep spreading it around but I figured I'd talk about it like I said I had 15 minutes and I am drawing this red girl again <laughs> well I'm finally posting the video anyway and this may be, who knows, maybe the last um, mermaid we see for a while. Maybe not. Maybe there'll be another one up before we know it. <laughs> so here is pretty much the final piece of the mermaid I did before Mermaid started. And I was really happy with the way this one turned out. Um, I was really happy with the watercolors. This was before I got the full set. There was just the bright ones that I had gotten in. But um, yeah, they worked great, and I ended up using them for a mermaid, and they made me want to rip my hair out at several points in the whole process. <laughs> but I did end up getting much better with them, and I feel pretty comfortable using them now, even though I have kind of gone back to my watercolors, because I mean, not my watercolors, my markers, because I really, really missed my markers more than anything. And there will be a links if you'd like to check out any of the products that I used to do this painting. I will leave links to all of the products in the description part of this video. So I want to thank everybody so much for watching tonight's video. I hope that you all have a great evening. 
And I want to give a big thanks to all of my subscribers. I seen I passed 600. So to everybody new, I want to give a big welcome. And thank you all so much. So, all right, I will let you guys go. Hope you have a great evening or afternoon or day, wherever you are. And I will talk to you in the next video. All right, thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.